Hello and welcome to a how to start guide on surviving the aftermath my fellow gamers. My name is Peter and I'm going to show you all the aspects of this game you need to learn to get off to a good start. Here I will teach you how to choose where to construct buildings, the build order for specific structures, where and how to collect and store crafting materials, as well as food and water and how combat works in this game. I will show you how to explore the world map, which specialists to use for exploration and combat missions, how to gain research points and the order in which to unlock the first technologies. Together we will follow the production chains to discover how to make proper meals for the survivors, as well as clothes to wear and tools to use. I will talk about the survivors' need for good housing and entertainment, which are both basic needs without which they will leave your settlement. When I make future videos about this game, you will be able to find them on a playlist linked up here and below in the description. Feel free to tell me in the comments which topic you would like me to cover. Now. After finishing your settlement and difficulty setup in the start menu, you begin on a small section of a largely unexplored map. Your settler character arrives past the broken gate and is ready to place the campsite, the first structure and settlement center. Your first instinct will be to just plop it down and get on with it. But this is not a good idea, because the game has a system of land fertility. You can see this by using the specific overlay for fertility in the user interface the plant icon, the one before the last on the bottom right. Now you can see the map colored in red, yellow and green. Naturally, the green shows where the land is fertile, yellow less so and red where almost nothing will grow. Additionally, green places are where water can be gained from wells, more on that later. As you can notice, even with the fertility overlay off, you can differentiate the unfertile ground by its yellow and red color compared to the fertile green. Beginning with the campsite, you want most of your structures on the red and yellow land. Green is to be reserved for farms and water wells. The settler character will construct the campsite and store there your starting supplies of food, goods and tools. Now you want to look over the visible part of the map. I will explain how to scout more of it later, but here you will find the wood, plastic and metal sources, as well as berry bushes and lake shores. Well, more like pond shores. When the campsite is finished, you can click on it and the option to shoot the flare and invite settlers. Or you can continue placing structures and go back to this menu to shoot the flare. I will shoot the flare and simply place buildings in the pause mode. The reason we looked over fertile ground and resource location is because those elements influence where you will construct which buildings. The first of which are free of charge, like two tents for living, food storage building, a stockpile for non-edible resources and a manned water collector for ponds. A good location for a food storage building is next to several berry bushes and not too far from the campsite. As for the water collector, it has to be placed on the shore of a pond to even work. Similarly to a food storage building, the stockpile needs to be next to several piles of wood and the campsite. Tents are best placed at the future workplaces or between them and the campsite. This provides settlers with quick access to food and tools from the campsite as well as their future workplaces. With this all done, unpause the game so the survivors and two starting specialists can move into your settlement. You can always click on buildings which collect resources to move their work area from the default circle around the building to anywhere on the map. In this gameplay aspect and many others in fact, the game is similar to Endzone, a world apart another survival city builder I made a guide about, link up here and in the description. Anyway, besides a place to sleep, settlers need a toilet, which in the most rudimentary form is an outhouse, upgradable to an actual toilet once you unlock that tech, more on that later. Place it close to homes and workplaces, but not directly there since they produce pollution. Because you gained 11 settlers, 2 tents with 3 slots each are not enough to house your population. That is why we now add more tents. I suggest setting them up back to back to save space and leave room for future roads. These should connect each workplace and home with your campsite so survivors can transfer resources and goods faster. Because you can't send out specialists on missions until you construct the gate, which is very expensive, and for a few more reasons, like an influx of new settlers you are not ready to house, you should use them to collect resources faster. Wood and berries they can collect, plastic and metal they cannot. Next up, you need to collect more types of food, as your settlers can't live off of just fruit and vegetables. They require meat in their diet. This is where the building trapper comes in. 
it needs to be placed inside a thick forest to get its highest production efficiency. On my map, the best spot has about 70% efficiency, but it is located in between two pollution piles. For the sake of showcasing why this is a bad spot, I will place it here and you will see the negative results. In your game, use a forest with less efficiency as long as it's clear of nearby pollution piles. Now let's hunt. Yes, you can have real-time combat inside the settlement. Against all sorts of neutral and aggressive mutated animals, crazy new survivors and even bandits. Here is a herd of mutated deer. My two specialists will take damage, but they can handle the deer. You have to attack them manually. The red icons above the specialist's head indicate combat mode. Once they kill the deer, you need to once again manually instruct them to collect meat from their caucuses. Next building we need is a recycler whose workers collect plastics from piles of it. Here we have two such piles. For a building to get constructed, you need to have three survivors who aren't working in any other building. They will move the resources from a campsite or stockpiles over to the construction site and finalize the building process. As for technological progress, you can't do anything until you construct the gate and send out specialists into the world to collect research points and later construct research outposts. Don't worry, you don't need any tech yet. But what you do need is a faster collection of plastics as you need loads of it for construction of all future buildings. Adding another recycler will help with this and you will always have multiple plastic piles in the starting map segment. Now because the second recycler and the trapper are in polluted areas of the map, I need a medical tent on standby to heal my settlers who will inevitably get sick from radiation. The specialists can actually help with building construction too. Just as I said it would happen, here is the first sick survivor. They will automatically move to a medical tent for treatment. Because we are out of free workers, we need to switch water production from the manned water collector over to wells, which provide less water but require no workers. They can only be built on fertile ground, so use the fertility overlay when choosing a spot for them. The additional problem here is that these can get contaminated and you will see this later because I will construct my first well at the exact spot you should not, next to pollution piles. For a medical tent to actually operate, it has to have a survivor working there. As there are 4 workers in plastic recyclers, I will take one out of there by simply left clicking on this image but above the eye icon. I will also remove the workers from the trapper as I have shown you now that it is just not practical to have them working so close to piles of pollution as they will keep getting sick from them. To find a new source of protein, I will place a fishing pier at the local pond. Since I know the first water well will get contaminated, I will already start the construction of a new one at another fertile patch of land. Once the first one is constructed, we can see that it produces 12 water, moving our production to 25, while the consumption is just 11. This lets us remove the worker from the water collector and still have enough water production. Similarly, once your six survivors are cured in the medical tent, you can remove the worker from there until he is needed again. Put him back to work at the recycler. In preparation for fixing the gate and having more survivors join your settlement, add more tents. Once the fishing pier is constructed, add two workers there and they will catch some fish, but do note that it's really slow and not efficient, so plan ahead to use a trapper instead. This game has many, many events popping up and I will show you just this one as this is not the topic of this video, but can be for another video. And if you have found this one useful so far, please don't mind me asking you to hit that like button, tell me what to show you in the next guide and subscribe to see it if you haven't already. The positive side of this event is the temporary boost to survivor's happiness. I will talk more about this later when we get to housing quality and entertainment buildings. What we now want to do is to reduce the travel time of the fishermen from the fishing pier to the campsite with another food storage building. This one should also be close to the tents so survivors can find food easily and not spend too much time getting it. With two active water wells, the water production should now be used to store water for future catastrophes in which you will need it. Use a clean water storage building for this and keep adding new ones whenever you have extra construction resources. Another thing to construct when you have stockpiled a lot of resources is the gate. Since it takes a lot of resources, add a specialist to help the resources delivery and construction. 
As for the old trapper building, it is useless now, so we should demolish it and get back some construction resources. Similar to the survivors events, there are also natural disasters, like meteorites. When these hit your buildings, they will become damaged and need to be manually repaired until you have a specialized building for this. When the gate is completed, it will open up the world at large to you, but it will also let the world come knocking. The first event at the gate for me is a bunch of survivors looking for a home. They not only bring resources, goods and tools with them, but also a new specialist. This is why you need more homes, tents in advance before building the gate. They will join the population now, allowing for more workers to be employed in new buildings, but they will also eat more food and drink more water. So keep an eye on the production and consumption whenever you accept new survivors into your settlement. Add more tents if it's necessary. As for food, the trapper needs to be rebuilt at a better spot with no pollution piles. This spot works for a number of reasons. The nearby tents, the food storage building is close, and a road leading to the campsite. Adding more tents here will help the survivors work faster. The only way to improve the efficiency of the trapper is to build a forester and send the workers from there to plant new trees around the trapper. After a few days, the new trees will help the workers at the trapper collect venison at 100% efficiency. Now it's time to go to the world map using the bottom right map icon. Our own settlement is in the center with three small outposts around it. These are the places the specialists can travel in their missions, finding goods, tools or research points. Going back to the settlement, we need our scientist specialist to go to the world map so we can send her on such a mission. Each specialist class is better at something than others. Scientists extract research points faster, while scavengers extract goods and tools faster. Fighters deal more damage against traders, and scouts move more each day on the map. By sending the scientist to the museum outpost, she will extract 500 science points in just under one day. The scavenger we can send to the farm to get tools. Back at the base, we are also producing only a bit more water than we are consuming, so more wells are called for. Also, do not forget to add more outhouses as the population grows. Since we are soon going to receive research points for tech unlocking, let's talk about the technology order. It might not seem to you that there is an obvious order to things, but unless you choose the right tech on time, you will have big problems soon. There are things survivors will ask for in a linear progression, so unlocking the tech required for those things has a certain order. In the first tech section, called food, your survivors will ask for proper meals made in a cookhouse that requires unlocking the tech communal eating as well as a number of prerequisite technologies. To even construct a cookhouse, you need metal, the third construction material which you can only collect using a scrapper building unlocked with the metal scavenging technology. Another thing that the cookhouse needs to make meals is a water tower that is unlocked in the infrastructure tech tree and water pipes technology. Schools which educate children are unlocked in the community tech tree and later entertainment is unlocked here as well. The safety tech tree opens up the frontier outpost technology which lets you construct outpost depots on the world map to collect research points, goods and tools from other regions. When the forester is built, move its work area to the trapper building and add another worker. This will fix the production efficiency we talked about before. As you can see from this new event, we had good reason to boost water production and stockpiles of it. A heat wave will increase water consumption by 100% among other effects, so it is a great example. When our scientist specialist finishes the mission in the museum, we can send her to the camping site to scavenge for protective clothing as she does have an 800% boost on her scavenging skill. To actually return goods and tools scavenged, you have to send a specialist back to your settlement at some point. As soon as they return, goods are offloaded and you can send them back out there. There are also quests in this game, but these two, just like events, I will leave for another video with a separate topic as I don't want this video to be too long. It will showcase events and catastrophes like heat waves, raider attacks, winter cold snaps and many more. Going back to our well in the middle of the two pollution piles, here you can see it getting fully contaminated. Instead of fighting that contamination with constant decontamination jobs, we will just demolish it and add another well at a better spot. You can use the fertility and pollution overlays in turn to find a good spot with high efficiency but low or no pollution. Once you unlock the tech for a scrapper, it is important you construct it close to a metal pile, even if it is far from the settlement center, 
because you can add new tents, stockpiles and food storage buildings to create a new fully operational work center there. Every 4 days you will have an opportunity to recruit a new specialist. You can pay them in currency only or in currency plus food combo. I advise using that combo as venison is easier to stockpile than currency. That currency is gained primarily by scavenging camps on the world map which is slow work. Now here is another lesson in survival in this game. One of my specialists was killed while harvesting wood. This is because he went too close to a huge pollution pile where sandworms live. Yes, actual sandworms. Not the size of those in Dune, but deadly nonetheless. Reloading to the previous autosave is totally normal at this point. Much later, when you have capable and strong fighters with high damage, you can send a few of them to kill the sandworms, but for now just avoid them. When the scrapper is finished, move its work area to the nearest metal pile to finally gather that third construction material. A nearby stockpile is a good idea to have a place to move all that metal scrap to. To open up more of the world map, you have to scout each part of it. This can be done by any specialist as long as they are sent to the edge of the known world and given the order to recon the next section. Just like all other buildings, medical tents need to be placed at multiple locations for the sake of having more capacity for healing survivors and doing that closer to their homes and workplaces. As you can see here, opening up more of the map reveals new places to scavenge for research points and goods. You especially need research points to discover all the tech required for a good settlement start. Prioritize this with your scientist specialists. After unlocking farming tech, you can place farms on fertile ground and grow your own vegetables as well as non-edible plants used for production of goods. Each farm requires one worker and different crops have different stats while new ones can be traded for or gained during different events. These are important so you can produce vegetable meals later on in the cookhouse. Next building to construct is a logging camp because the cookhouse will use up firewood in cooking meals, so you need to start producing these in advance. Another building you need, just before finishing the research and building of the cookhouse, is a water tower to supply it with water for cooking. The cookhouse itself needs to be close to that water tower, as well as a stockpile or campsite, so it can be supplied with water, raw foods and firewood. To secure a good supply of firewood, you need a good supply of raw wood, as you will be using up all the piles of wood by now, you need a lumber yard to start cutting down actual trees. Good places for it are in wooded areas next to a forester or logging camp building to help the efficiency of that whole production chain. Once the cookhouse is constructed, you can choose which meal type to produce, a vegetable or meat meal. Produce the one for which you have more raw food, but later add another cookhouse to produce more meals as this is a slow production process and also to cook the other type of meals. Wood is needed for a lot of buildings and for firewood, so add more lumber yards as you play. Another reason you need more of them are winter storms, because they force you to burn a lot of firewood to heat up your settlement if you don't want survivors to freeze to death. This requires constructing burners, which have certain double range circles. The smaller is the warm range and the larger is the non-freezing range. All your buildings must be covered with these or they will become frozen during winter days. When you find vehicles on the world map, they have a limited amount of fuel. You can walk your specialist right into them and travel much faster on the world map using them. Half a dozen specialists can fit in one, but the disadvantage is that all the goods and tools you looted get deposited in the vehicle. To get them to your settlement, you have to drive the vehicle into it, but once they get there, you won't be able to get them out again until you have the whole vehicle operation researched and a garage built with fuel production chain to boot. To set up the protective clothing production chain, you have to start collecting fibers. These can be gained from skinning animals caught by the trapper or growing certain plants on farms. Skinning animals is the first research tech in its tree, so it's already easy to unlock but does require spending resources to upgrade the trapper to produce fiber. Once the school is researched, you need to build it as soon as possible to start sending kids to class because they will be 30% more productive as adults if they have been educated as kids. Scout towers or guard posts are required to unlock more of the map for you to use, so you have to construct them on the edges of the fog. Guard posts are unlocked in the tech tree 
and let two scouts be armed while at their post. These scouts will take their sweet time to reveal a circular area around the tower and let you start building there or collect newly discovered resources. When a building gets this purple haze around it and in it, that means it's been contaminated by pollution and it requires manual decontamination by clicking on that option in its info panel here. Because your survivors have been living in just tents, their happiness will constantly suffer. To change this, you need to research the tech called communal living and unlock the shanty and tenement buildings. Shanty has room for 4 survivors, 2 less than the tenement, but it gives them more room and willingness to make babies, something to keep in mind. When you research this tech, start building shanties and demolishing tents. Another building you must unlock and construct is the outpost depot. Once it's finished, here you can convert any specialist into a settler. That settler is sent out into the world map and there you have to travel with him to a zone where there are campsites with passive research point generation. Some produce more than others, so choose your zone carefully. Once the settler gets there, click on the build outpost button and choose the research outpost. It will be constructed and immediately start providing you with research points each day. As for combat events, they might not start out as such, but develop from your choices. I decided not to give in to demands of this raider group and they attacked my settlement for it. This is why you need to keep at least some specialists at home so you can fight off these raids. Using the alarm will make the settlers unhappy, but it is a necessary measure in this situation to summon all guards from their towers. Now to increase the happiness of the survivors with entertainment buildings, you need to construct a memorial and that will give you a flat 20 point increase in entertainment. That won't be enough for long, so invest in the aggressive release tech to unlock another such building, the Brawl Pit. It will let you double the entertainment bonus. As for making tools and protected clothing, you first need to research the handicraft technology. This unlocks the tool shop and tailor. At the tailor, you will produce protective clothing from fiber, so placing the tailor next to the farms or trappers producing fiber is a good idea to reduce resource delivery times. When it comes to the tool shop, the same applies. Place it close to the scrapper, so metal is plentiful nearby as the toolsmith uses that metal to produce basic tools. Another tech upgrade allows you to have more than one worker in these buildings to increase the production output. And that covers the whole process of starting a new settlement in surviving the aftermath. I know it seemed like a lot, but that is only because there is so much more in the advanced gameplay in this great survival builder. If you are interested to see more, please let me know and I will continue this guide with that more advanced gameplay. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.